Randomized, uh, completely randomized design is not the only way to design an experiment. So why is that? Well, sometimes it's difficult to keep other variables the same for all groups. Um, there are certain things that we can't control. We can't assign gender, ethnicity, age, day of the week, in case you have different days that you're gathering fish or from a production line or a batch or the size of the schools. So the way we do that is we create blocks based on factors you can't control. These are a lot like strata that we did when we did stratified random sampling. But remember, stratified is only used for sampling. Blocks is used for experiment. It looks just like com a completely randomized design most of the time, except you do an ex a separate experiment for each block. So a randomized block design for my class, I could break up uh, pre-AP geometry students and regular geometry students because you could argue maybe I'll see a different level of uh, response for those two groups. So what I'll do is put all the regular geometry students in one group, randomly assign within that block, and then do the experiment. And I do all my pre-AP geometry students in another group, randomly assign within that block, and compare results. Now there's other types of very special block designs and these are called matched pair. When would you use this? When you have either matching pairs of experimental units like the twins. Remember the preacher who said, oh, we'll keep one as a control for the baptism. That would be more of a matched pair design. So what you do is instead of randomly assigning twins to two blocks, what each pair of twins is a block and you're going to randomize treatment so one tw twin will get the treatment and one won't. Um, or the other way you can do a special type of matched pair is before and after, which can look like a pretest and a post test. So if we think this software will help kids learn how to multiply be uh, better, we can give them a multiplication pretest, give them the training, and then give them a multiplication post test and take a look. There's no randomization at all in this before and after design. So let's take a look at what the diagram would look like for the first case, which would be the twins. With the twins, basically you want to make sure each twin is in, in blocks together. And here we randomize the treatment so we didn't always take the first twin as the one getting the treatment and the other one being the control. Now I'm going to use my geometry example for the before after. So, and I actually did do this. So I have a match pair design and I have 80 geometry students, student one. We're going to do fall hand grading and then spring auto grading. Now, why did I choose this type of method instead of something else? Well, first of all, it's much easier if I'm grading all of these students that I don't have to remember who I'm, which way I'm grading for each student. As a teacher, I've got enough to do. So, I did the hand grading in the fall and I switched to auto grading with Kia in the spring and then I compared DCA performance. This is called a before and after design and yes, I did see improvement. So some cautions when you're doing experimental design. Make sure nothing else changes on before or after. So if I had students who were um, you know, something happened that they, they, well, first of all, if they change classes, I take them out of my experiment. Um, if, so if they have different teachers. So I try to keep things the same for the before as I do for the after. It's still difficult to do on this one because the fall DCAs are a little easier than the spring DCAs. Now, bad things can still happen to good experiments. So record any data that might be relevant. So you can look for other factors, other confounding variables that might be uh, confusing things. And it's always good to pre-test surveys and experiments, like do a small scale one and say, oh, I wish I'd seen that or that I knew about that. So pre-test your surveys and your experiments before you go through all the effort to gather the data. 